This is probably the most comprehensive review of Fedora 40 on YouTube because we are not just going to cover the desktop environment but we are going to dive deep into the release. Take a look at the new kernel and some other spins of Fedora. All of these under 14 minutes. Okay, starting with the kernel, you get the 6.8 series kernel out of the box. Currently, in my version of Fedora 40, I have the 6.8.4 installed. But the 6.8 release itself has a ton of new features. It is an ahead of time kernel. There is experimental support for Intel's XEDR drivers and further support for AMD Zen 5 and other upcoming AMD hardware. Initial code for Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and more. But does that mean there are no features that you can currently use or experience? Thankfully, there are plenty, starting with the Intel Core Ultra mobile processors, which can now hit their advertised speed levels on Linux systems. If you are on the latest Intel Core Ultra chipset, you can definitely expect some performance improvement during peak loads while you are running Linux. And they didn't leave out AMD too. Ryzen 7000 and upcoming 8000 series laptops were suffering from radio interference from Wi-Fi and GPU memory clocks. Linux 6.8 includes AMD RFI mitigations in order to solve this. Pi 5 has been out for some time from Raspberry and now Linux 6.8 provides a solid graphics experience out of the box. No extra kernel patches required along with some more extended support. Sizable uplift is there in TCP performances. It's set to improve with many concurrent connections up to 40%. So yes, network related improvements are also there. Gaming improvements and additions are there in this release. Added support for a bunch of consoles and controllers. Here is the list. There are also a bunch of driver fixes. The entire article is linked in the description below. If you want the entire picture of the kernel, you can definitely go there and read it. Okay, the workstation editions got a big update in the desktop environments. This is the flagship release of Fedora 40 and it is powered by GNOME, which is probably the best desktop environment in the entire Linux universe for people who love consistency and professional design, for the most part. Codenamed as Kathmandu, this is GNOME 46. Let's check it out. There are some improvements in the shell, starting with the notification center. There is new grouping of notifications by app. Now each notification has a header. It shows the app's name and icon. It makes it possible to see which app sent an alert. Notifications now also have an expand button. You can now open new windows for apps which are pinned to the dash by adding the control modifier. For example, super control one will open the first application which is pinned over here. And if I go for super control two, it will open calendar, which is the second one. Four will open software. Uh, five will open the text editor. And again, six will open my app, which is Evolve. This was previously possible too with the Super Plus one, two or three. So if I go for Super one, it will open Firefox. But with this addition of the control modifier, you can now open new windows of the same app again and again. So if I already have this open and I add the control modifier, press the one button, as you can see a new window launched. Previously, you could just switch to that window. For example, Super 1 will switch back to Firefox and Super 2 will open the new instance of Calendar. But again, 1 will switch it back, 2 will again switch it back to Calendar. But if I press the control key now, it will now open a new instance of the app. For example, Files is already open. So if I press the control modifier and press the three button repeatedly. As you can see, it opens new instances of the file manager. Uh, if you pressed just super plus three, it just focuses on the file manager. Also by default, now tap to click is enabled for touchpad. Grim 46 now features remote login option. You can remotely connect RTP uh, with Gnome now and start using it. It's available uh, inside system. You have an option that is remote desktop and here you get the remote login option. So you can remotely connect using RTP to a new dedicated desktop session when there isn't an active session. Okay, the settings page has a lot of new features. Now the appearance tab loads a lot faster than it was previously loading and the previews are also very sharply defined now. There are a couple of improvements here and there, such as you get a more a precise control of Wacom stylus pressure. Gnome has also reordered some of the stuff in settings, so they are now uh, available a little bit in a different way. So for example, the system part now consists of a lot of other information along with the about uh, section. It now has uh, SSH access, remote desktop like I showed you earlier, users, date and time, region and languages and more. 
Now the about section consists of all the required information and of course you get the system details page from which you get this neat copy button which was introduced earlier. And the touchpad settings has also got some improvements. Online accounts page. Now uh, previously you had the option of logging in from here itself. For example in Google I, I could have logged in from here inside a dialog box but now it's available from the browser and it's it might seem like to be a little bit inconvenient for opening a new application but it's actually much safer than the previous option which you had. The default apps page is now present inside the apps page where you get these options. Uh, previously they just showed in the sidebar now you get them inside the main view and you can click and open the app. It also shows if the app is sandboxed or not. Uh, if you open a flat pack application it will show you it is sandboxed. For example this is probably flat pack and as you can see it is sandboxed properly. So like I mentioned before has some improvements too and it also now includes the removable media page. Notable improvements are there in the files app too. So here we have the files app. Now you get this new search button which is the search everywhere button. So if I search for something in the downloads for example um, this bgrofi.png if I search it inside here I don't find it. You, you previously got this option only to search everywhere if something is not found but now you get it directly inside the files app to search everywhere. So if I click here search everywhere it shows. Similarly I can just click this button for searching everywhere and I don't know if you notice it it is extremely fast. Doesn't mean you don't get the option for searching inside a folder you can just start typing to search for something but if you want you can also press this button to search for that. And this has become editable now so you can click and edit it um, to enter a different directory to right now. Previously it was impossible. And about the search bar, it also shows how consistent the GNOME developers are. So you get the same search option in files, settings and also if you open the software app, you get the search option at the same place. So they are really trying to make everything more consistent, which is a great thing. Next, the copy option has got some new changes. Now as you can see, we get a new copy option. I mean, a new view of the progress bar. Previously it was available here I guess in the corner but right now you get it here. Uh, there's some space at the bottom part of the sidebar so again why not use it. Next is a very small change switching between grid view and list view now happens instantly. Previously it took a split of a delay and the entire screen became blank but now it's just instant. Also the star animation has a little bit of an update so when you star a file it shows this nice little animation but now you also get the on star animation. Now the calendar app has got a nice little UI update. There are some additions here showing the week number but along with that you get a new animation for the about page and not just the about page it's also available in the new event page you get this nice little animation and it's adaptive so if you make it smaller and go for the about page it now comes up from the bottom like drawer similarly for the new event which now goes down because of the small space you get the same animation which now pops from the bottom part and if you make it larger it becomes a dialogue again with the changed animation it is but at some point the calendar app looks kind of messy in this part so it's not fixed yet. It was also present in the previous version and it's still there. Now along with these there are some other improvements too. The software app now displays verified badges for trusted flatpak apps ensuring software authenticity. Map has got some nice little improvements. You can now enable the experimental map which is adaptive to the dark mode and is much sharper than the map which was used previously. So if I again switch to the light mode, you will notice the map changes and it uses the lighter variant of the map. Also the clock app has been updated. You can now quickly set any timer and you can just click and it will start. Contacts has also got some new changes. It now lets you to import multiple vCard files at once in the app. It has also got some other performance improvements which is reduced memory usage in search, significant speed boost in terminal apps, more appealing visuals as app interfaces appear sharper, text on the screen is clearer and UI elements more defined. 
particularly when using fractional display scales due to GTK's new render. There is also experimental support for VRR, which is variable refresh rate or smoother video performance. Uh, you can enable this feature with the command, which is using G settings. Once enabled, the refresh rate can be set in the display settings. There are some under the hood changes in Fedora Linux 40. You can check them out from the official release page, which is linked down in the description below. To know more about GNOME 46 and get an interesting feature too, make sure to check out the video from the i button above or click the links provided in the description below. It is also tested on Fedora 40 mostly and I've also used GNOME Nightly for the testing purpose. Okay, the Plasma release of Fedora 40 now has Plasma 6 release out of the box. It is a significant update. First things first, Plasma is now pro Wayland, which means it now defaults to Wayland over X11. All the remaining bugs in the previous release of Plasma Wayland are fixed, and you get a really stable, solid Wayland experience with all the Wayland specific features, such as HDR gaming or video support. But that doesn't mean it has completely ditched support for X11. You do get a Wayland to X11 bridge, support for all X11 apps. Also, this is the first release of KDE Plasma using Qt 6. The entire desktop experience did not completely change, but the panel has got some updates. It is made floating, so it looks much better, but it is adaptive at the same time. So if a window covers it, or if it is maximized, it becomes a normal panel. And there's a new panel settings page too, which is so much better with all these previews. Now, there's also a new Alt Tab interface, which now looks very similar to other operating system, and it's a welcoming change for people who are first time switching to KDE Plasma or even trying out Linux for the first time. This also makes KD Plasma more suitable for first-time recommendations. There is also a new activities page which is mimicking that of GNOME activities. It is a really nice addition too. Breeze got some upgrades, although it doesn't look prominently different or alien, but reduced borders now make the app interface look more clean and modern. This was a necessary change. Much of Breeze remains the same though. Settings pages are revamped, some positions are altered too. However, most of the stuff remained the same in settings. And then we have updates in Dolphin, Spectacle with new keyboard shortcuts, Kate with its uncanny text-to-speech voice, and console getting memory monitoring feature with changes in Plasma Mobile which isn't part of this release since it is meant for desktop use only. Overall there are solid additions to the Plasma 6 release but at the same time there are some problems. To watch in details check out the entire Plasma 6 review and feature 2 video from the i button above or again you can click the links provided in the description in order to access it from there. If you had been keeping up with the Linux use, Fedora recently added a new group of operating systems known as the Fedora Atomic Desktop. Well, not a new group technically, but they placed their existing immutable releases under the name Atomic Desktops. This is coming after their success with Silverblue based on their flagship GNOME experience and many other spins of Fedora now jumping into their Atomic releases. As you would expect, there is Kionite 2, which is the KDE Plasma based Atomic Desktop environment on Fedora, along with Sway or Budgie Atomic desktop spins instead of names like Onyx in order to keep things simple. Also, future releases under this will be termed in the format as Fedora, Desktop, Environment, Name and then the word Atomic. Okay, so that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.